Hello and welcome to Class 12 Sociology Online Video Lectures. Dear children, in today's session, we will look at the topic called the origin of dormitories. If you remember, in my last two sessions, I explained to you what is a dormitory and also explained to you the various functions, be it cultural or educational functions, performed by dormitories in tribal societies. So today, we will look at the origin of dormitories, meaning the reasons, the factors, the causes behind the setting up of such informal institutions by the tribal groups. So let's begin with the origin of dormitories. Now there are various, you can say, theories which are put forward by sociologists, anthropologists, right, regarding the origin or the evolution of dormitories. However, today we will look at a statement given by Dr. D. N. Majumdar, where he has given one of the plausible reasons behind such origination. You will find the topic on the origin of dormitories in page 5.5 .5 in your textbook. Page 5.5 .5 in your textbooks. We can start investigating the origin of dormitory as an institution with the words of D. N. Machandar, where he has said, the origin of an institution, institution meaning we have done family, kinship, marriage, religion, these are all institutions. How they have started, nobody knows, all right? We do not have a, a fixed date and time, month, year, from when these institutions might have started. Or even a custom, customs that we follow during birth of a child, during marriage, during death. Several societies have several customs, but we do not have the real reason behind the origin of such custom. We do not know who started and when they must have started. Or a religious rite may be an accident. So he says here that just like many of the inventions were accidental. If you remember even uh, Newton when he was you know, uh, lying under a tree and an apple fell. Then what struck him was this falling of the apple that this is the law of gravitation. That whatever goes up must come down. This was also accidental. The invention of electricity or light bulbs or telephone, everything happened accidentally, even the steam engine, which we have learned about in our previous or junior classes. Similarly, D.N. Majumdar is of the view that probably dormitory also came up as an accident, just as inventions usually are. But the complicated machinery of social formation that we have inherited today has gathered its complexity and momentum in the course of its career. Meaning, as and when time passed by, individuals started living in societies, societies also started evolving from a simple society to a complex society. The complex society that we are living in and as time passes by, things become even more complicated. These institutions have gained more importance and value over the years. So he has explained to us saying that the one reason why it came up was maybe by accident. But over the years, because it had some function attached to it, this institution was very functional. And the functions also kept changing along the way. That is why today we have formal institutions like schools. Then he says here, there are differences of opinions among anthropologists regarding the matter of origin of such institution. For example, Hudson opined, initially tribal people lived together in a common place so that protection and security are ensured. 
so the origin of dormitory is connected with this primitive mode of living this is a second school of thought a second theory given by hudson hudson feels that tribal groups we have discussed the definition of tribes a tribe is nothing but a group of families this is a typical example of communal living living in groups you don't find tribes who are isolated or families who are isolated these groups always move together either in search of food they have settled together they work together so hudson feels that the primary reason why this dormitory originated was because the tribal people stayed together reason why they stayed together is for security and protection in the olden days there was always this fear of one group attacking the other that is the reason why we also have this neighborhood concept why don't we have an isolated life why don't people live away from the towns and cities or they just live a very solitary life it is because we need our neighbors it is because we need society we need individuals to help us so here hudson says that one of the reason why dormitory originated was because these tribes also used to move around in groups and in this group they found security and protection security and protection was there but what about the children you have to pass on certain values knowledge information ideas to the next generation probably this could be the reason behind the setting up of dormitory so that will be the second reason for the origin of dormitories now coming to the other thing he says another opinion suggests initially children were to be maintained in a separate place so that they are not directly influenced by elders world especially the union between parents should not be witnessed by them the other reason was why children were to be separated kept in a different place either in a married couple's place either in a widow's house either in an uh, a married but a childless couple's house why were they kept separately is because they had to be separated from the parents and the reason is again that they should not witness the closeness or the intimacy of the parents so you kept the children a little bit far away but in the same locality and this way the children also they grew up together they also learned many things in the dormitory next it says the cause might have been the union of able and strong hunters served a major protective purpose of the village this function often required youngsters to guard the village at night probably that caused the arrangement of bonfire fun and frolic the fourth reason why dormitories came up you have seen one of the functions or the features of dormitory where the children they come to the dormitories they dance they drink all right whole night they have merry making and in this way the children were allowed to sing and dance and mix with each other all night now many anthropologists see this as one way of guarding the village if any group wants to attack the other group but if you see the fire is burning everybody is awake people are singing dancing making lot of noise i don't think so the other group would dare to attack this group only when somebody is sleeping only if it's quiet then even a burglar might get into a house but in a house or in any locality where everyone is awake and singing dancing lots of noise coming nobody would want to attack this place so most of the anthropologists feel that the youngsters were allowed to drink dance right all night was actually it was the elders who were protecting the place 
This is also a fact that before people could settle down as agriculturalists, they did not become proper as hunters. So the children required a cozy shelter which took the form of dormitory. Now this is the other factor. Because tribal groups were basically nomadic groups, they were always moving from one place to the other. So when they were living or moving around in groups, of course, the men used to go for hunting, the women used to go for food gathering, etc. But the children had to be protected. Protected from wild animals, protected from weather, rain, snow, hail, all right, natural, sorry, calamities. So therefore, what they did was, they started putting the children in caves, putting them in a safer and secure place. Because the children were also seen by these primitive people as the future generation. So their first and foremost right, work or task here was to protect these young children. So this might have developed later into dormitories where they started keeping the children separately from the elders. So these are some of the reasons but we do have many more here. Roy has offered a threefold purpose on Orau dormitory. Oraus are tribes from West Bengal and Roy has given three functions that Orau dormitory performs. First, it is an economic organization to collect food. He says the dormitory is an organization primarily whose objective is to collect food because everybody lives together so men go for hunting fishing all right women they go and collect nuts and berries and shells so they bring the food home all these people bring the food home and that is how they share the food and that is how they live collectively this could be one purpose second is it acts as a seminary, seminary meaning an institution for training. It's like a training center. A very good hunter will train a young boy to become a hunter like him. They will teach the children how to practice agriculture, when to sow certain seeds, when to harvest, when to reap it, when to go out for fishing, what kind of fishes to catch, what kind of tools and implements to use, for the women, how to look after the baby, how to cook, how to look after the house. These were the training centers, especially for the young boys and girls. And the third thing is, it provides a place to organize even magical religious ceremonies. Black magic was also taught in the dormitory. Religious rituals, customs, and sister worship all right all these religious rites and rituals were also taught to the younger children in the dormitories to design to bring success in hunting and to develop procreative powers of the young men so this shows us the supernatural side the superstitious side of the tribal groups who believed a lot in taboos and superstitions etc so therefore these are the three reasons given by roy for the formation of Orau Dormitory. Thank you for watching.